Chapter 8, page 135. Dear Diary, I told Daryl about me choking on that sausage biscuit yesterday. There was even more laughter in his face, but he tried to hide it. But I laughed, and then he did. I also told him about Mr. Rufus, that he was in, the co was in a coma. Daryl didn't think that was funny, which is a good thing, because it wasn't. Not at all. I told him about me almost hitting my whole team with the discus. He, his laughter came back, but then he noticed that mine didn't, so he, dis he disappeared his immediately. I told him that because of that, I had to go to practice today. He said he'd take me. Then he told me a little bit about his date with Miss Linda. Dinner told me she was nice and smelled much better than Mr. Nico, who smells like himself is a cigar. And that was all he said. And diary, I'm glad that's all he said, because the thing is, I'm glad he went out with her, but I don't want to know and nothing else. He did say one other thing about the date, though. He said it made him feel younger, like he had a boom tick booming and ticking again. That, that parts of me, not him, Daryl didn't say that. And that got us talking about my mother and about when they were kids. He dug out an old photo book and we flipped through old pictures of him with different haircuts and my mother with different hairstyles, and my grandfather with less gray hair, and Aurelia, who looked exactly the same. Daryl talked about how Gramps wanted him to be a doctor too. How we always said saving a life is always more important than saving a dollar. Daryl also talked about how my mother's parents died when she was in high school in a freak accident and that Aurelia's family looked after her, which is why she looked after Aurelia when she got all messed up on drugs. Daryl went on and on about him and my mom, how they met on a school bus and she used to cheat off his homework. And on it went, the stories, each one better than the last, all of them making me feel like I was being warmed. I got to tell him more about the team I didn't have much else to really talk about because the team is only part of my life that is not this house. Or Aurelia, the team is ba-da, 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 bang, bang, is the zip zap and the what, what. So they are who I have to talk about. I reminded him that Ghost was the one who jumped the gun. And Lou is the albino one who looks like he's been to the Olympics already. And Patty is the only girl in the crew. Daryl thought the fact that I said crew was funny. Then he asked me if I liked Patty. I asked why he was asking. He said, because whenever I say her name, my face has a weird thing. I asked, what kind of weird thing? Daryl smirked, then flipped through the photo album back towards the beginning. One of the first pictures, a Polaroid of him and my mother at a Chinese restaurant. They were young, close to my age, and scribbled on the border was D and R's first date. Daryl pointed to the image of him, pressed his finger, on his own goofy photographed face, and I could feel mine going all melty melty. Page 138. Dear Diary, when we got to the track, Daryl got out of the car and walked over to the stands and took a seat in the exact spot he normally sits in during the meet. Coach was already there. When I think about it, Coach is always there. It's almost like he lives on the track. He's never late. He shook Daryl's hand, shook it long. Then told me to head to the track, told me this was just like any other practice, so I needed to stretch and do warm-up laps as usual. I watched Coach my father talk. I couldn't hear what they were saying because they stopped, they stepped way back from the track. There was a lot of hand movement and some arm folding, but ultimately it looked, ultimately it looked okay. After my two laps, Coach met me at the throwing circle. He had his crate of discuses just like the day before. He said that all I was going to be doing was throwing. That's it, just throwing to get me comfortable as possible for the meet tomorrow. Coach told me to keep my form tight, to just whoosh, whoosh, ah. And I went, spinning and throwing, spinning and throwing, Coach standing beside me, feeding me the metal discuses, making slight adjustments to my technique. Coach would tell me to keep my knees bent. He say, he'd say not to muscle it, but to just let it leave my hand to just let it go, and I was doing okay until one got away from me and shanked off to the right and landed on the track. And then somebody yelled out something about how they could have hit them, and I turned around, and it was Patty. She was strutting over to the track. Behind her was Lou and Ghost. Coach yelled that this was the closest was a closed practice and that there was no riffraff allowed. Then Lou called me riffraff and said, I'm here. They should be allowed. That made me feel good. Then Ghost spat sunflower seed shells and said we were like roaches and that 
where where there's one, there's four. And I don't know if that was true or not, but it's an interesting thing to think about and a little frightening. Ghost had walked over after school. Patty's friend Skunk, yep, Skunk, brought her and Lou. Skunk, who's unfortunately looks nothing like a skunk, was over by the stands shaking my father's hand. They had come to support me. Lou said they knew I was used to leading the pack. Now the pack had come to help lead me. So now, with them watching, I started again with my spinning and releasing, the discuses sometimes chucking through at the air wobbly, and other times cutting through the sky like a blade. And with each throw, whether good or bad, Lou, Patty, and Ghost would cheer me on, good one, or not bad, or don't worry about that one, or hey, as far as I'm concerned, that should be part of the field. And before I knew it, there was a voice, a deeper one, my father, he had come onto the track, onto the field, and was standing off to the side, shouting, that's better, and try again, and that's how you do it. And while, when all the discuses were thrown, they all clapped for me like a bunch of weirdos and helped me retrieve them all so that I could throw each discus again. Diary, after a few rounds of that, I'm happy to say I was consistently getting discuses up in the air, flat and straight. It wasn't going into outer space or nothing, and it was definitely not going uh, a mile, but it was flying. Coach spent the last 30 minutes of practice just nodding, which for him is always a good thing. At the end of practice, coach told me he thought I was ready and that I could at least place third because that's there's only three of us competing. Patty didn't like that. She said I'm taking first, like always. I didn't say nothing to that, just smiled because it was cool that she believed in me like that, that they all did. But the truth is, I'm not sure I even really care about winning at all.